You can ask one simple question to determine whether or not his design is actually 100% um, efficient. One simple question. I'll always show you, those scam artists will always show you these really complicated looking blueprints. They look very official, they're very complicated. He has all these hand waving arguments about how he's going to make everything 100% efficient. We recycle this, we do that, and all these other things, and you come up with 100% efficient. You don't even have to look at the blueprints, do you? There's one question you can ask, and that is, where is your zero degree reservoir? The only way you can have a 100% efficient engine is if the exhaust temperature, the rejection reservoir, is at zero degrees. Not centigrade, <laughs> these temperatures must be in Kelvin. So I don't care how complicated and how beautiful and what an elegant speaker this guy is. All he has to show you is the zero Kelvin reservoir, and then he has a chance of having a 100% efficient machine. And of course, that doesn't exist, does it? There is no place in the universe at zero Kelvin. Does anybody know the temperature, the coldest place there is, is intergalactic space. Between the galaxies, that's the coldest place there is in the universe. And it is not at zero Kelvin. Does anybody happen to know the temperature of, of uh, intergalactic space? A little bit under three kelvins. Hmm. Yep. So, to have a 100% efficient machine, you have to have an exhaust reservoir outside of this known universe. Because no place in the known universe you have a zero Kelvin reservoir. So, you know, if you're ever offered the opportunity to invest in a 100% efficient machine with complicated drawings and elegant arguments, just ask that question. Where is your zero Kelvin reservoir? They won't be able to show you, at least not in this universe, and uh, therefore you cannot have a 100% efficient machine. Because if you don't get a car no efficiency of 100%, you're not going to get a real efficiency anywhere close to 100%. Okay, what fun. It really was. Um, in the early, in the middle 1970s was the first oil embargo, and uh, the price of fuel went up much more dramatically than it ever has since. In fact, in a very short period of time, the price of gasoline tripled. It went up by a factor of three. We've never experienced anything like that since then. Uh, uh, the increase. That's why, for a period of time, the world was full of, shall I just call them scam artists, all with uh, wonderful investment opportunities where you could make millions and millions of dollars if you just gave them a small amount of your own personal funding so that they could build these well-designed machines. Um, it can always be. That was one of the most fun times being a physics major. Yeah, where's your zero <coughs> the reservoir? Oh, that doesn't matter. He'd say, well, yes, it does. Let me show you. <laughs> Let me derive the Carnot efficiency for you and show you that it does matter. All right. <clears throat> Next thing I would like to do is I'd like to run Carnot backwards. What would happen if you ran Carnot backwards? Um, let's talk a little bit about it. If you run Carnot backwards, I'm imagining starting at A and going this cycle. A. D, C, B, A. So, uh, from A to D is an adiabatic expansion. So, of course, you would drop to the lower temperature reservoir. And then, once you reach that lower temperature reservoir, then you do an isothermal expansion. If you're doing an isothermal expansion, of course, the only thing that really happens is you change the direction of the heat flow. As I do with the red pen, there it is. You change the direction of the heat flow. So what was once Q out becomes Q in, and the arrow points in the other direction like that. Then we get to point C, and we enjoy a adiabatic compression from C to B. That will raise the temperature back to the original higher temperature reservoir. And then we have an isothermal compression from B to A, and it does the same thing. It reverses the direction. Now, when you're doing a, an isothermal compression, you are rejecting heat, so this becomes Q out. 
So all we do is then just really reverse those two heat flows. Q in is now across the lower isotherm, and Q out is across the higher isotherm. So what you're doing then is you're pulling heat out of a cold reservoir and you're rejecting it into a hot reservoir. You have a refrigerator. The engine run backwards is a refrigerator. So let's talk a little bit about the Carnot refrigerator then. What if we run the Carnot cycle backwards? A, B, C, B, A, then uh, we have these lovely expressions that I've just told you. Uh, adiabatic expansion, isothermal expansion, adiabatic compression, isothermal compression. We have a refrigerator, and they discuss not the efficiency, because you're not doing work, you actually have to do work on the system. And so instead of talking about efficiency, they talk about something called the coefficient of performance. The coefficient of performance is K, and I'm going to use a capital K like that for coefficient of performance, is how much heat do you uh, uh, pull out of a cold reservoir, and how much work does it take um, to get that done? So a refrigerator, you have to do work on the system to run it backwards. You don't get work out. And we call, we call the coefficient of performance, it's like the efficiency. It's just how much work you have to do to move a certain amount of heat. So Q cold is the heat out from the cold reservoir. Work in is the work required to perform the operation. So this is this, and work is how much work you have to do to go all the way around the cycle once. Work required to perform the cycle. Work is going to be, is going to be, of course, the sum of QDC plus QBA. We know that because we end up on the same isotherm. We start the end in position A, so the work is the, uh, is the total heat flow, keeping in mind that one direction is plus and one direction is minus. In fact, I even put a note to myself, um, QBA, when we're talking about this isotherm, that's where it comes out like that. So QBA, uh, negative sign, and that's because uh, this is rejected heat. So it's heat coming out. If, when we put this number in, it's plus a negative number. So it's going to be the difference between the two. And uh, of course, you can see easily here what's going on. That is that the incoming heat added to the work is the outgoing heat. That's how it's going to happen. So the coefficient of performance, K, let's write this down. K is going to be, now notice I'm going to be kind of careful here. Q, the incoming heat is DC, divided by the work done, but notice I'm putting in the absolute value of work. Well, that's minus Q DC over Q DC plus Q a. How do I know that when I exploit the negative sign, it introduces, uh, when I exploit the absolute value, it introduces a negative sign? I say intuitively from the Carnot engine, I think you know that the negative value of Q, the, the Q coming out here, is going to be larger than this. You have no choice. It's going to be larger. The Q out is going to be larger than the Q in. Hence, therefore, uh, the lower number will have a negative sign, and so to get rid of the negative sign when you're done here, to make sure everything turns out positive, you have to introduce another negative sign there. So you can be absolutely sure there has to be a negative sign there because this Q is larger than that Q, and it will have a negative sign with it when we stick it in there. QBA is larger than QDC, and it is negative. So, so, the coefficient of performance then can be written down like this. Ah, ah, watch this. 
watch this, k is equal to minus qcd over qcd plus qab. Wait a minute, I reversed the, the subscripts here, I reversed them. And when you do that, when you reverse the subscripts here, you introduce a negative sign. When you introduce both of, uh, when you change both of these subscripts, you introduce a negative sign downstairs. So the negative above and below will cancel each other out, and this negative will remain. So it's okay to do that. It works out mathematically just fine. And there's a specific reason for doing that. Once you do that, you can notice, look at this. What if I define k equals minus q C D, yeah, plus Q A B over, and the same thing, Q C D uh, plus Q A B. I add in a negative Q A B over Q C D plus Q A B, so I have to uh, add in a positive one to make up for it. Q a, B over Q, C, D plus Q, A, B. So I have a positive one and a negative one, and uh, they cancel each other out. But if you do it like this, of course, then you'll notice that um, uh, we have here negative one plus QAB, QCB plus QAB. And sure enough, the Carnot efficiency is QCB, QAB over QAB. And that means that the coefficient of performance can be rewritten, k can be rewritten as minus 1 plus 1 over the Carnot efficiency. Or um, 1 minus Carnot efficiency over Carnot efficiency, if I think of this as Carnot efficiency over Carnot efficiency, then I could write it like that. Uh, putting in for the Carnot efficiency, 1 minus 1 minus T cold over T hot, divided by 1 minus T cold over T hot. And of course, 1 minus 1 is 0, and we have a negative T cold over T hot. And uh, Downstairs, we have, um, what happened? Oh, we have this equals T cold over T hot divided by 1 minus T cold over T hot. And then multiply through by T hot. Let me just squeeze it in right over here. So when I do that, then the coefficient of performance is just simply T cold over T hot minus T cold. So we have also a very simple expression for um, the uh, coefficient performance for a Carnot refrigerator building upon the work that we did with the Carnot engine. Now having done that, we have 10 minutes left. One of the things I like to do, it'll be the first time we do it, one of the things I like to do is to have this thing called a, um, an in-class problem, where I pass out the problem, and this is uh, you know open book, open notes, even open conversation with your friends, and before I collect them, I will solve the problem on the board. So this is like a personal challenge. Look at this, look at your notes, talk to your friends, do not look at the board until you think you have it right. And then everybody gets a free 10 points just for, for participating in class problems. So I can pass this out quickly without just 10 minutes, so everybody gets a chance to look at it.